Hi guys, welcome here, live back at Kangaroo Wildlife Ranch, last stream of the night. Um, Alright, we're going to get started in a minute, we'll just wait for a few more people to join the stream, and then we'll get going. Okay, so... While we're waiting, guys, um, just see who all's joining. Emma Lise, Pieter Ray, Karika, Mama Malt, <laughs> Garrett, Dad, Ryan. Hey, guys, thanks for all joining. Thanks for watching. Um, Marianne, thanks for joining us so late, guys. So, yeah, it's gotten quite cold. Um, Temperatures dropped about two degrees since the last stream. It's now about eight eight degrees Celsius. Um, the lemurs are being smart and have not come out again since the last stream that we did at nine o'clock. Um, they all tucked in nice warm in their night house. <laughs> all right. So we'll get started in a second. Just a reminder, everybody, <clears throat> the flash sale for the tickets for the ranch is available now. Um, so from 11 till 12, it is available. If you also go into the comments um, of our last live stream, there are the link to the where you can buy them is there. I'll also explain in a few minutes where to go to to get that. And obviously that is not for now. That is for when we open up again after lockdown has been lifted um it will be valid for them so it's half price tickets just the normal tickets that we offer um normal entrance tickets that's going on now from 11 to 12 the sale all right thanks for joining everybody see we've got quite a few people joining us i really do appreciate appreciate you guys joining me so late um in the evening yep tammy the temperature is dropping um Adam, hello, thanks for joining. Hi, Carmen. Yeah, I was in my bed now, a little bit, waiting to do the stream, and it was nice and warm in there. So it seems to be doing, I'll be okay tonight, so that'll be good. All right, so something cool is actually the flamingos are busy doing the feeding that I spoke about in the previous stream. So I'm going to try and take you there. And show you that without disturbing them. I'm switching the angle of the camera. Whoop, and they all stop. There we go. I don't know if you can hear it when they do do the swaying backwards and forwards, but. The, it's how they're pumping the water with their tongue through the cone-shaped filters and catching the food that's floating in the water. So that's pretty cool to see. Um, it's actually one of the first times that I've seen it and heard it this loud. Obviously, it's a lot quieter now at night than it is during the day usually. So that's again one of the cool things about this nighttime streams is that we get to see things that we don't usually get to see during the day. Um, so that is one of the things that I've very rarely seen um, the flamingos doing and actually hearing it so clearly. All right. Okay, so the flamingos also will feed throughout the night um, and the day. They don't only feed during the daytime all right guys so with this stream we're going to talk a little bit about some of the rehab work that we've done with some of the animals 
also uh, Narinda, um, one of our colleagues, she's the director of the assistant director of the zoological department, uh, mentioned about some of the wild critters that we come across here at the ranch, um, at night especially. So we do get some of the um, wild animals that come in, um, animals like your spotted genets, small spotted genet, um, different bird species that we do, especially here on Lima Island. Um, they do love this enclosure. Every year we have Egyptian geese that come and raise their young over here on the island until they are big enough and then they go off. Um, <laughs> this enclosure also used to be covered in grass and thanks to the Egyptian geese there are no, there is no more grass. Uh, they ate it all. Then we also have um, cave clawless otters in the river behind this enclosure. So behind the wall at the back there, there is a river that runs um, behind there. And there are cave clawless otters, wild ones, in that river. And they're quite big. Um, they're actually about three times the size of speckles, our spotted necked otter that we have here. Um, so yeah, we get some, if one of those guys do were to come out while I'm here yeah, doing these live streams, I'll be running in the opposite direction. I don't want to get caught with one of those guys. Like big, strong bite power. I don't want to be bitten by one of those guys. <laughs> All right. Um, Melina, hey, welcome. Um, she's asking where I sleep. So I'll show you in a minute that. Um, so then also the rehab work, obviously we do have a permit that allows us to do rehab work with some birds and some smaller mammals. The ducks are flapping around at the back. Um, so we usually get quite a few owls in, young owls, um, some other birds of prey. If we're not able to rehab them ourselves, we then take them on to other facilities um, that can then help us out and do the rehabbing as well. Uh, interesting case that we had was a few years ago, maybe two or three years ago. Um, we got a call about a bird from Kaladsdorp, which is not too far from here. Um, and the lady brought it to us and it turned out to be a red-tailed tropic bird, which you do not find here. They are marine birds. They do not occur in the Klankaroo at all. They don't even occur around South Africa. They're mainly around Hawaii, those areas. Um, there's been very few spottings around South Africa. I think it's something like two in history of them. And we had him for a little while and then we took him down to Sankob in Cape Town um, to take care of him further and with for the rehab work there. So yeah, that's one of our cases. We've also had um, some snakes uh, a lot of people are scared of snakes and a lot of people believe that the only good snake is a dead snake. Um, that is not true. Um, they play a vital role in our environment, controlling rodents. All right. And the one time we found a snake caught in a fence and he caught himself so caught up in this fence that he actually um, cut through his stomach, the skin of his stomach. Um, and you could see his organs on the inside. So we got him untangled off of the fence and we were able to then, unfortunately that day, there was no vet in town. So we contacted our local vet, Dr. Carlisle, and he gave us some advice and we had surgical glue from him still. And we actually glued the snake back together and we had him at the ranch for quite a while. Uh, it was just before winter. So we had him with us for the winter. And once the temperatures heated up again, we did release him into the felt across the road, which is one of our, our properties across the road, um, the reserve section of the ranch, the cheetah breeding section, cheetah breeding reserve, sorry. All right, so let's see what else. We've got some greetings from Norway. Um, so yeah, like I said, some of the animals we have been able to then release back into the wild. If they obviously are not able to re be rewilded, um, we will then house them and give them a forever home, like Penny, one of our porcupines, 
um, who had a very serious injury, but we will still come to her along the way of our live streams as well. So I don't want to give away too many secrets. <laughs> All right. Garrett, you asked, do they eat through the night? Um, they will eat on and off through the night as well. It's not just because of the spotlights. They're not only, uh, they don't only feed during the day. They feed um, at night, at day, multiple times, different times. All right. Okay, see if there's any other comments. Okay, Melina, I'll show you quickly where, where my bed is. For you guys that didn't see it in the previous um, live stream, I'm sleeping on Lima Island tonight. Uh, not indoors, so it is outdoors. Nice and cold. Currently, it's 8 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to show you quickly. I've kind of, kind of tried to shelter myself a little bit um, under a bush. So those of you who know Lima Island, it's right under the bush in there. That is my bed. Um, so the bush will kind of shelter me from the cold dropping down on me. And hopefully it won't get too bad in the early hours of the morning. Usually your temperatures are worst here at around 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. So hopefully it will be nice and comfy. Uh, I am expecting it to be cold, but it's part of this thing. It's part of the challenge of doing the live streaming at night in the enclosures and sleeping in the enclosures with the animals. All right, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting as we go through. Awesome, Leclou. Thank you for getting your flash tickets, your flash shell ticket. Um, it's great. All right. Okay, let's see if there's any nice questions. On the previous stream, somebody asked how many um, rings do the ringtail lemurs have on their tails? It's generally 13 black, 13 white um, that they have on their tails. All right. Adrian. Adrian's asking, why did you guys never... Adrian's one of our previous volunteers, and he's asking why didn't they ever get to sleep with the lemurs when he was there. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> ducks just decided to go for a quick swim and that was quite loud. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the first time anybody's actually doing this um, in here as far as I know. Um, so it's a new thing and it's because of the COVID-19 pretty much. So that's why we're doing this challenge. It's a fundraiser obviously. So that's why I'm getting to spend some nice cold nights outside. And it's going to be fun. All right. So Melina is asking, how often do we change the climbing obstacles for the Lima Island? Um, yes, Melina did help me build some of them back in 2017. So these, I'm going to try and show you guys these obstacles that we've got in here for them. All right. Um, that's for the lemurs to climb on work on their balances all right so sorry the spotlight there guys over there and then we're working on some more along that way connecting those poles all together so melina did help me build some of these um when we've got materials to do it and new ideas then we do change them. we do try and change the enclosures around late regularly um, keeping it new, keeping it fresh for the animals, um, changing it up to keep it exciting for the animals. It's also part of the enrichment program for them, right? Keeping, changing their environments, keeping them stimulated mentally and physically. Gerard <laughs> said, enjoy. Thank you. I will. Andrew asking, where's Lihandra? <laughs> She's was probably in a warm bed. <laughs> she joined me last night. Ryan, some scary sounds you're experiencing right through the night. Enjoy. Yeah, luckily, yeah, in Lima Island, it's not too bad. It's actually been pretty quiet. Um, the flamingos have got been making some random noises, which you don't expect to come out of a flamingo, <laughs> which is quite funny. But they've actually quietened down a lot since our earlier streams. For those of the, you that joined me in the first stream, with me and Angelique, you would have heard how loud they actually are. Um, 
but yeah, they've quietened down a lot since then. So they're calming down a little bit. So any interesting nighttime bugs or birds so far? No, actually not. Um, I haven't seen or heard much out here um, tonight. The It is a full moon tonight, so it is very, very clear. Um, very bright as well. So I'm going to have a look. Uh, once I end the stream, I will be putting off the spotlights and maybe then there will be some activity. You don't know. Um, so it's always exciting to see what comes out with some of the other streams that I'm going to be doing. Um, they're in some more open areas and uh, I am expecting some activity from some of those wild animals. Things like porcupines as well that we get that come in from the river. Um, so, and mongoose. So, yeah, um, if any of that stuff does happen, I will let you guys know as well. It's always a lot of fun when the wild animals show up at night. <laughs> okay. Garrett's asking, Cheers, Adrian. Thanks for joining. Okay. Garrett's asking, um, have we noticed any different animal behavior with the full moon? Um, with the full moon, so far, nothing actually that's out of the ordinary. Somebody asked me this question last night as well. Um, a lot of pe people do say that sometimes with full moon, even with some people, they act differently. But with these guys and with the animals in the temple last night, there wasn't anything that obvious that's different, um, so to say, for the full moon. Other than the temple door opening up by itself. <laughs> All right. Um, Andrew is asking about our fundraising target for the month. Um, and how far off we are with that. I'll get back to you on how far off we are on the target. But to give you some, just some quick facts about um, how much it costs to keep the ranch running. Um, if you look at, I mentioned it last night, just feeding and vet costs for the animal department in a year is about 1.3 million rand. Um, that doesn't include salaries for the ranch. That doesn't include water and electricity. Electricity a month to keep the ranch going is somewhere around 150,000 rand a month, which is a lot of money. All right, so those are pretty much our, some of our overheads um, that we do have, and it's that's what we need just to give these animals what they need and what they deserve. Um, so, yeah, those obviously will be our targets going forward to keep the animals going, um, feeding them, keeping them fed with the diets that they we want to give them, right, and the vet costs. All right, but uh, in the streams going forward, I will also be pointing out targets and how far off we are with those targets. This is our second night. We will be doing seven, um, and I'll mention some more of that as we go along, guys. Thanks, Janet. <laughs> right, just seeing if any other comments that have come through. Tammy's asking, what's creepier, this or the temple? The temple was definitely creepier last night, without a doubt. Um, I've mentioned the door opening up by itself a few times. Quite a lot that was the creepiest thing and i think will be the creepiest thing i don't think anything will top that um in the seven nights uh so yeah that was the worst and i don't think it's going to get worse so this is actually quite nice for me i do like being outside um camping is quite nice so the cold ain't nice that's for sure uh, but we'll see how that bad that gets tonight um Andrew's asking, do the animals behave differently with less human interactions with them now that we're in lockdown? Uh, yeah, we have seen some animals' behaviors a little bit different. Um, some animals almost looking for that attention that they would be receiving on the tours. Uh, Speckles, our spotted-necked otter, who's a favorite and a, quite a big character. We definitely see her looking for attention. <laughs> with people that um, when we walk, when we uh, go say hi to her, um, she loves the attention that people give her and always on the tour she gets a lot of attention. Uh, so she's definitely one of the animals that show that 
uh, attention. And then, yeah, there's quite a few of them that have shown some signs that uh, differently. Um, obviously, our animal caregivers are still working with the cats daily, um, keeping up those bonds with them, which is very, very important for them. Uh, makes working with them so much easier, vet work, everything, and taking care of them. It makes all of that so much easier, less stressful for the animals. So that's really, really vital that they keep up that great work that they're currently doing. Uh, Leandra, that was mentioned earlier, she's one of the caregivers and they've got a very good, strong team um, that work with those guys. All right. Okay, so I see Tammy, uh, one of our colleagues, has also replied on the overheads as well. Caroline Magna from Australia. Thanks for joining, guys. She loves Prickles, who is one of our porcupines. Okay, porcupines. All right. Okay. So if there's any other questions, guys, feel free to ask. Um, this live stream won't be a very long one. I won't keep you guys up for too long. There's not much going on. The lemurs are sleeping. The flamingos are eating still. <laughs> which was awesome to see there. Um, but yeah, then again, just a reminder of the flash ticket sale that you guys can go on to. So you go onto our website, you go to book um, bookings, and you go to the book online, and you go look for the after dark sale. And that's pretty much a 50% off on our entrance fees, the basic entrance fee ticket. Um, that's now 90 Rand. Um, and obviously that's not for now. We're in lockdown, so once everything is safe and everything goes back to as normal as can be, um, those tickets will be valid for then. And then you guys can come and visit us, come and say hi, and also see the animals that I'm showing you guys that uh, our guests are speaking about and get to see them in person and get to experience their personalities in person as well. A lot of these animals each have very, very different personalities. Um, and hopefully you guys get to see that when you come to visit us and say hi. All right. Mama Malt is saying, I must tell you guys what happened last night. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just in the temple. The temple entranceway is a door that opens with motion sensors and that decided to open up by itself twice last night so that was what happened last night it was pretty creepy all right okay so like i said as well in the earlier streams we are doing challenges daily um dares it's a better way of putting it actually that some of our colleagues have put out to us and then we post those. Those aren't live streams. Those are pretty much, um, we post them first thing in the morning. Um, and then you guys get to see that. So yesterday, uh, we were pretty much simulating the bats, trying to eat like the bats do upside down, showing how hard it is, how well they are adapted to it. Um, eating was very tricky, yes. Drinking wasn't so bad. I was surprised how easy it was. Um, but trying to eat while doing a handstand, not that easy. All right, and then we've got another one today. Um, it was a bit of a bigger challenge. More people joined us, more of the staff here at the ranch. Big thank you for everybody that joined us. It was fun. Um, so keep an eye out for that tomorrow morning when we post that video. All right. Um, okay. And then... Obviously, also every day we will be joined by a different guest. So tomorrow we will be having a new guest join us at the 6 o'clock stream. Um, stay tuned for that one. It will be quite fun, I guess, I think. Um, so, yeah, you will also find out tomorrow who's joining me. Um, quite a crazy guest as well that's joining me tomorrow. Okay. All right, guys. Um, Hope you guys are still enjoying the live streams. Again, feel free if there's any questions to ask them. If I don't see your questions straight away, I promise you I will try and get back to you 
in some of the other streams or comment on your your question your comments on the live streams as well to answer your questions all right as best as what we can okay is there anything else from you guys that are watching any other comments i'll quickly take you to see the flamingos one more time while they're feeding and then i think that will be the end of it all right so quick visit to the flamingos one more time the flamingos <laughs> just going to change the camera around all right and we'll head over to them They're all watching me now, seeing what I'm doing. <laughs> all right, guys. So those are some of our flamingos. There's one that's just opened up his wings there. All right. Shaking it off there. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to be saying good night and hope you guys have a good evening further. Thank you for joining us. I'm just going to quickly see if there wasn't any other comments that have come in. Change the camera back. All right. Okay, so yeah, that's about it. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Nadia, hoping I wake up to a lima face. That would be pretty interesting. Uh, maybe I'll wake up and I'm getting cuddled. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yep. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for tomorrow. Bobby will tuck me in. Maybe. You never know. Maybe we become great friends after this. Um, but yeah, that's it. Go have a look at the flash ale. That will still be up. And... Yeah, enjoy your evening, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I will be seeing you guys tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Another three live streams, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 11 o'clock. Awesome, thank you very much, sleep well guys, and see you tomorrow. Good night.